what the vault in the cathedral is. So we need to hit off the length. The length runs parallel to the slope. And what that means that you have two different ceiling heights. The first one will probably be eight, and the next one, let's say, for example, will be 12, okay? And so what happens is, is where that lies on the wall determines if it's a vault or cathedral. And uh, if that vault is on the um, wall itself, that is the highest point that is a vaulted ceiling. So we need to determine what the length uh, is on that. That will be our length runs parallel to the slope. So find, find that, that slope, run it up, and that wall is your length wall. So that's what we have to determine. So once we do that, we're gonna go on to the, the third step. Determine the width of the wall. Well, that's real simple. So if you've got the length, you've already measured that. And let's say that our length is 20 feet. And then our other width is gonna be, uh, let's say that it is uh, 30 feet. Let's go on to the next step, please. We have to determine what the height of the wall is. And what that is, it's the first one is H1, which I call is the lowest part of the ceiling. And that is going to be, let's say for example, eight. Let's do the next one. The next one is to determine the VC height. Now that means vaulted in cathedral. That's the highest point of the ceiling altogether. So the hint is, what is the highest ceiling height? That will be H2, and let's, let's say that that will be R12. Let's go to the next one. This one is, um, this one is determine the peak along the length. Now, what does that do? Um, that basically determines if it is going to be a vault or cathedral ceiling. What that means, it's the highest point in relationship to the length wall or running along the length wall. So, I'll give you an example. A vaulted ceiling means that the highest point is on the wall itself, so that will equal a zero. So, that, so if that highest peak is on the intersection of both the length and the width wall, that is a zero and that is a, a vaulted ceiling. Now, the other way is, let's, how do, let's talk about a cathedral ceiling. On a cathedral ceiling, you have two different uh, elevations, of course, but this time on either side of the wall, uh, one's going to be eight and the other one is going to be the high point of 12. So think of the cathedral ceiling as a church ceiling, okay? And so uh, basically what we're going to do is take our tape measure, we're going to start at the intersection of the length and the width, and then we're going to run our tape along the length wall until we get to the ridge beam, and that is going to be our peak location along the length. So that's how that's determined. So for example, if you have a 20 foot length, it's going to be the highest point in the mid center would be 10, okay? Here's a little tip for you. Vaulted ceilings have a peak location of zero. Vaulted ceilings always have a peak location of zero, okay? The next tip that I've got is a cathedral is between the two measurements from zero from the from the beginning and then the end. In this case, we had I just took a, a preliminary um, uh, measurement of 20. We have it at 21 foot seven. So let's say it's zero and 20. Any anything in between that, that is a cathedral ceiling. Now what what's really good is that well, here's another tip for you, is that when you walk into a room and you see a triangle that is your length wall. So find the wall with a triangle and that is your length wall. Okay, and those would be the steps on completing for, for uh, vaulted and cathedral ceilings. Okay, and um, Nicole, do you have something to add? No, I'm gonna go ahead and um, sh now it's time to show your screen so we can actually get into the SimSol program to go over that example that you just showed us. All righty.
All right. I'm going to move this over. And Nicole, can you see my screen, please? Yes, I can see it. Okay, very good. Now, what I'm going to do is kind of illustrate with with a drawing real quick, and then I'm going to actually do it on the vaulted cathedral ceiling. So I'm just going to double click on this. And this is a, a little diagram that I made up. Okay, so this on your left is going to be a vaulted ceiling. So at the corner piece, uh, you, that is going to be the lowest point. That'll be H1. That's going to be the eight foot. We're going to go all the way up to the 12 foot. Okay, and this is the other adjacent wall. All on the other side, that's going to be 12. As you can see, the, the highest point of the ceiling is on that adjacent wall. So that is going to be a vault. Remember, that is going to be a zero. If we move on over to our other little diagram here for cathedrals, you're going to see two different heights, eight to 12, prospectively there. And as you can see, we call that a church. So that actually what you can see is if we put this in construction terms, here is our ridge beam right up here. That's the highest point of the ceiling, and that's in dead center. So if I had a wall that's 20 feet right here, and if I took my measurement, this would be 10 foot from the highest point of the ceiling in relationship to the length wall that is going to give you 10 feet, and that is um, what will be the peak location. That's how you determine it. Remember what I said is that when you see a triangle, when you walk in to a room with a triangle and it's, it's the cathedral ceiling, the wall with the triangle is the length wall. Okay, so that, that's how that works. So let's see how we apply that into a real life claim. I'm gonna click on done. And I'm gonna now go into the scope of damage. Remember how, what we said when we first started, it is going to be, uh, the first um, when we come in is to the area so we have to determine what the area is so I can just say uh, for example living room and we what's the first thing that we need to do area is vaulted so once what usually when I do is I click on areas vaulted I'll come right into the height so our first first height is 8 I'm now going to come over to 12 as I click on 12, I need to put the length and the wall in, and the width of the wall in. So I'm going to come over here and select 20 feet for the length, and that's determined by length runs parallel to the slope. I then select the width, in this case 30. The last thing that I need to, to address um, on a vaulted or cathedral, is it a vault or a cathedral? That's determined either by zero, peak location along the length, so the highest point of the ceiling is at zero, that is going to be a vault, or I can do a cathedral, and in this case, I can say the peak location is at 10. And that's all there is to it for doing vaulted or cathedral ceilings. So as you can see, steps one more time, is you need to check area is vaulted. Second step, put in the different heights. H1 is the lowest part of the ceiling, and that's going to be 8. Top part is going to be VC height, which is vaulted and cathedral height. That's going to be 12. After that's complete, we need to determine what the length wall is. Remember, length runs parallel to the slope. And once we do that, uh, we put the length in followed by the width. And the last step will be the peak location. Remember, peak location of zero, vault. Anything beyond that is going to be um, going to be a cathedral to the other side dimension. So that's how we do it. Okay, so I'm going to come up and then uh, click on done. Okay, and so that's, that's that first segment. Now the second segment that we're gonna be talking about is going to be how to scope stairwells. Okay, now stairwells is kind of interesting because if you can take a look at it, a stairwell will be, let me bring, bring the um, diagram up here. And a stairwell here is nothing more than a vault. Okay, that means that my low point is going to be at the ground itself. 
My highest point is at the top. That is going to be the uh, H2 or the highest uh, part of, of the stairs. So you can treat this as a vaulted ceiling. So the way we can do this is, is going to click on done here. And then I can then select my scope of damage. So once I put that in, I can then take an area. And I'm just going to say that it's a bed, uh, let's say it's a living room. Or a lanai or a kitchen. Let's just select living room, which is here. I'm going to put in the length, the width. So I'm going to put a 20 by 15. I'm, and um, that's there we have our, our dimension on that one. Now to put a stairway in, I'm going to use a um, another component, all right, so that I can treat it as a vault. I'm going to take this up here. I'm going to click on that and make this. And I'm going to treat the um, even though this is in this in the um, living room, I'm going to treat this as its own area, and I'm going to call this stairway. So anything I write will be uh, right to the stairway itself. And then here I can put that the length is 20, the width is three. Okay. So now that I've got that in there, I can now determine the the height. Now remember that um, a stairway will probably start at zero. Then as I put that in there, I can now select area is vaulted and then now select the highest point, which is going to probably be about 18. So now I can I can pop that in there and just use the peak location as a vault. And now when I do my dimensions and I come up and scope it. It will take a second to load. And now when I now when I want to scope it, I can then come up and then select my drywall items. It will now if you were doing a closet, a stairwell with a closet, then I can put that in and I can do scope number one, which is going to give me the right dimensions, and scope number two. So um, I can address my ceiling height, so if it was a flood claim and I needed to go four foot, I can actually do this and bring it in. If I need to scope the whole the whole area up all the way up, I can do that as well. So this is going to take into effect all my drywall, everything from uh, my vaulted ceiling to tra uh, treat the treat the wall side of the vaulted ceiling. Uh, just like you would treat a stairway. It's, it's actually very easy to do, okay? And I can also then paint it. So if you're dealing with painting all the time, then we can put that in, okay? And then it'll put the proper, put the appropriate amount in. So, and then if you need to add the steps, you can do that. Okay, here's, if I need to carpet those steps, I can do that. Let's see what we got here. Try that again one more time. There we go. And then I can do it by a, a step per each. Let's say it's 16. And there we go. So um, that's how you can actually do your stairways pretty easily um, and put that in. Now, if you're doing uh, different types of stairways that is not a typical, like uh, against the wall or if it's center, you can treat that as just a separate object, put the steps in uh, manually, just, just put that into your regular scope. If it was in the living room, you could do it that way. But what I'm talking about in this regard is, is you're going to have steps, like for example, in a typical uh, type of thing where you would have a closet or a water closet or some type of closet, underneath and then you can you can uh, run your steps up that way so that's the easiest way how to, how to do steps uh, into the simsol system drawing the steps that's a different story <laughs> it doesn't really like to do um, the treads 
uh, it can do treads vertically, but it uh, doesn't like to, if you turn your tread, uh, I'm sorry, it likes to do the tread horizontally. And if you turn your, if you turn the, the actual diagram around, it does not like to do that one. What I do is, um, I'm gonna go back into the drawing here for just a second. This is what I'm talking about right here. So here I have my treads here, you know, my steps. Um, and that would be my indication of the, those, that would be my steps. But if I come over here like this and I rotate it, you know, I might have, a, it might be different here. So what I'll do is I'll turn this off on my um, pattern, okay? And either do something like this on my pattern or I can keep it like that, okay? So I can I can change I can change it with a with a, that type of pattern there to do to do your steps. So another thing is you can draw them in by by hand manually if you wish to do so. But that's the easiest way I know to draw steps. Make a box, which is right here. I have a little um, rectangle or square, and you can then select it, draw it, and then fill it. And then once you fill it, then you can change it. So uh, that's something that you can try and do, All right? So that works out real well. So that's it for um, doing um, scopes and stairwells. And the next section that we're going to be uh, we'll be doing is how do you scope a tray ceiling? What is a tray ceiling in the first place? Well, a tray ceiling is different elevations uh, involved with the ceiling. That means, like, for example, if you um, go to, like, restaurants or something of that nature, they have two different elevations on ceilings. So basically what you're going to do is how to scope that in is actually really easy in some saw is because you treat it, it's almost like a vaulted ceiling, okay? So as I come up here and I... Let's say I've got a bedroom number two. I'm going to put a length of, a, let's say, a 20 by 20 in. Make it nice and simple. Then once I get, that'll be the outer shell. That'll be your first height. So your first height is going to be eight feet. Okay. Now maybe some somewhere in the in the center, uh, you might have a different elevation, and that's going to go up. So what we do is that's going to be called a tray ceiling. So if you take a look at our area component entry screen, we come up and then see the tray ceiling, select it, and it gives you the length, the width, the height. So what I can do here is I can check on length is what say that we have a four foot length. Our width is also, let's say that we have a six foot. And then the height. Now remember that the height is going to be at the at where the tray ceiling starts, okay? So that's gonna be above the eight. So it's gonna start at eight and then go up to the second, um, whatever the highest point of that tray is. So I'm gonna come up, I'm gonna select, let's say, a two foot tray. So as I put that in there, I have the insignia of tray on here. So when I come up and I scope it, it's gonna take the missing opening up for the for the um, tray, that opening area, and then apply it to the second level of the ceiling. So if I come over here and go to ceiling drywall items, I can then come up and then hit one and two, and thus giving us the right calculation for the main outer shell of the, of the uh, main outer shell of the room, which is the uh, the uh, dimension of. Let me give it give it to you right here, uh, 20 by 20. And then along, that's going to give me the outer dimension, then a cutout, and then we're going to add the ceiling for a four by six with the height of two foot. So that's how that works. It's actually really easy to do, and uh, we have that in there. Um, we'll also have a other type of, of ceiling here that we can do, and I'm going to come up and then select it and click edit, and we can do a not just a tray ceiling we can actually add a dome ceiling, okay? So if you have a dome, you can select it 
And then from that, as you can see by the diagram, it's going to be the distance uh, done by height. So let's say that my um, diameter, I'm sorry, the diameter is, let's say, by foot. Okay, that's, that's the edge, the edge of a circle. And then the height is how high it's going to be. Well, let's say that it is at two foot. And then as I do that, the computer will automatically calculate your dome ceiling for you. This is good for skylights. So if you have to put that in, skylights are in there. Um, some, you know, some of them are or different odd shapes and one might be a, a dome ceiling, okay? All right, um, you can always do different, if you have to make certain dimension, dimensional changes, I would like to show you the custom uh, item up here. So for example, I do have, I can do an addition or subtraction of either the floor, the wall, or the ceiling square foot if necessary, or I can do a lower perimeter um, dimension. So for example, if I need to put some ceiling, I had to take that away, I could take minus 10 square foot out of it from my major calculation and it would be there. So that's how you can handle weird stuff by using the custom item. So you can either go plus or minus floor, wall, or ceiling, or do the lower perimeter and upper perimeter. I don't know if you know this about Sensol is, is that when you start to um, do uh, calculations for um, closets, we get this, this is the number one question that we get on this subject from our users because they come up and they say, well, we put in the closet, our upper perimeter and our lower perimeter do not match. What is the, what is the uh, thing about that? Well, the thing is, is the reason why our upper perimeter and lower perimeter are not the same is because it's for crown molding at the top of the closet, okay? So that means to you is that you have an opening for like a door opening, okay? So we take that out of the base for base molding. But if you take a look at the upper perimeter, that is um, going to be, does not have an opening on it. And so you would do the full um, perimeter uh, for linear footage for that. But we, we exclude that for a closet. So if, we, if you come up and we do, for example, and then we go back to the bedroom number two here, and if I come up and click a closet, here we have 80 and 80. So if I come over here to the closet, and then let's say it's a two by two by six, which would be a standard closet. The width of opening, let's say it is a um, four, let's see what we have here. Two by six will be, do a, be a four foot opening here, six by eight. Um, if you take a look when we do this and then put the height of the opening six foot eight, I have, this, I have that, um, our closets um, will have a different parameter. So as you can see up here, upper perimeter is zero. A lower perimeter is 12, so that's why, because we do not put, when you go to crown uh, molding, it will not put it in the closet. I hope that answers that one. That's a, that's a good one here. Another thing I'd like to talk about is going to be called the uh, wing slash column, wing slash column. Um, this is to put in your pony wall. Uh, that would be good for like islands, for kitchens and things of that nature. Um, what determines a wing and a column is actually the distance from the wall. Okay, so I'm going to come up here and put in a pony wall. Select it, and let's say that the length or what's protruding out is, is going to be, uh, let's say, six feet. The width is usually one if you're dealing with walls. And the height is the height that you want to do it. So if I want to do a six by four pony wall, which is there. Now, if I leave it at zero, it is going to be a wing. And what that means to you is that it's going to take uh, two of the length size walls and one of the width. Okay. 
two of the length size walls and one of the width. So it's joining with an existing wall. Okay. So that is going to be a wing. Now, if I come up and say I want to make it a um, column, I can come over here and anything that's greater than zero, let's say that I want to put it at four foot, and then I can select it. And as you can see by the drawing, I can then place that uh, pony wall wherever I want. And then I can use the, then the distance from the top left. Let's make this six. And then I can I can add the pony wall however I want. So if I'm making an island, I can put two pony walls in, length and width, and reverse it. And then um, I can have that island for a kitchen. So that's kind of nice. So keep be aware of how to use pony walls, and, or the, the uh, what we call wing and column. Okay. All right. So that's how we do that. You've got pretty much all the Openings. Um, I would like to touch base on offsets, guys. Offsets. I'd like to talk about that for real quick. So when you when you click on offsets here, okay. Remember that if you have an offset and you've got a vaulted or cathedral ceiling, okay, and it is there's your there in <laughs> this is vaulted and you've got this in here. So I've got eight and twelve. And the peak location, let's say that it's zero for a vault. Then, when I click on the offset and click on the length and the and the width, so on an offset, you always look into the offset for the depth. We call it length, but it's actually the depth. So, if I wanted to go and do a um, four foot offset by six foot, which I can place that in, and then I can move that over. Okay, so as I do the offset, if this, if this is sharing a vaulted ceiling, a vaulted ceiling, it's going to share the vault to the top of the hive. So in this case, um, it would be a flat roof here, but I could change this height if it's following the vault. It's on the same slope of, of what the vault is. I can say that it's actually 10 foot and it'll cut off at 10 foot. Okay, so it'll still follow the vault. So if your vault starts at eight, then it would be a flat, okay, if you're dealing with the offset. And then if you put 10 foot in the height, it will share the vault to 10. I hope that makes sense with that, okay? So that's pretty much it for doing uh, your um, various different tray ceilings wing walls okay um, some people ask us about windows how do you handle like bay windows that would be the next topic on there um, bay windows what i usually do i can just draw a bay here for you let me come in and just do that for you real quick i'm going to come up here to sketches and do a new a new diagram so, for example, on doing a, on how to handle bay windows. So, for example, I come up here like this, and I'm going to select another one. And this one here is going to be there, and then I'm going to come back here and write it down like this. So, basically, this, the, the computer, so when I run my straight line over for the this is kind of like an invisible one. So as I select that, excuse me, need to need to turn this off. There we go. So as you do a bay window, or and you've got this, um, how do you would How would you put that in, for example? Uh, into SimSol for a bay window for, for doing the drywall and everything. What I usually do, guys, is you square it up, okay? So what I'll do is I'll just come over here and square whatever this square dimension is off of here. Then from that, whatever, uh, you know, whatever the amount is, 22 by 7, 
um, I could get that and put that into my um, dimensions if I was doing bay window area by itself, put that into the area, put that square in there, and then what I'll do is then I will take the other one as triangles on the two, one for the bay edges, and I will put half of it, whatever the length is, I'll do half because that's what it is for a triangle, and then that's how I can do my um, different odd sizes. So what SimSol cannot do curved edges, okay? So um, if it's a diameter, you could use the diameter tool and that could do it for you. Um, but I try, what I try to do is just draw a box around the main area that you want or try to uh, put the dimensions in as a box and segment that all out. And then if you have a triangle or whatever type of um, shape that you have, you can manually calculate that shape. So um, we are working on trying to do curves right now and some odd shapes. So that is in the works and we are programming that in. So that will become a reality. Okay, so I will let you know that. But that's one of the old questions, well, you know, I've got a circular room or I have a bay window or how do I do that? Um, the bay windows are kind of easy. Um, if you're doing the drywall on it, I, I take it um, as a square and then uh, what the remaining area of that square from the main area uh, would be the triangles. So then I can just calculate that out. And that's how that works. Okay. So what I want to do is... Um, I would like to uh, open it up to questions and see if we can answer any of those. So Nicole, can you um, open that up for questions? Or Mathis? Hello? Okay, well, I'm going to try to open it up for questions here. And uh, let me go into the audio. Hold on just a second, guys. Anybody has questions? We're, we can do it on the... Um, See, I'm looking for the mute here real quick, guys. Hold on a sec. Uh, we have it on the, um, do you have a sketch or photo to show the difference? Okay, to show the difference in the vaulted or cathedral ceilings there, Jim? Is that what you mean? I wanted to make sure. Uh, let me look under here, audio. Is that what you mean, did, mean Jim? Just type it out on the chat. No, I, I, I don't see him chatting. Uh, Mathis, uh, do you see that? Danny, can you hear me now? Yes, can you take me off? Can you take me off the mute, please? So everybody can start uh, answering those questions because I do not have that option. All right, give me one second here.
Can anybody hear me? Okay, yes, I can. Apparently they can't. That is strange. Did you already get the question about what about a circular room for Sean Nickel? No, I did not. On a circular room, what you'll do is you'll take a diameter. You can actually use the tool, tool for doing a diameter room. So if I come up and then select the done button, go back into the uh, scope of damage, uh, which is right up here in the building, create the area, and then I can just come over here and then select a um, a dome ceiling or a dome area, it will give me my square footage. So what you're doing is you're just taking the radius of uh, the of that, okay? So for or the diameter of that, excuse me. Um, so if you had a 10 foot uh, circumference all the way, it would be five. So that's how you do it. It's very easy, Sean, to do that. Um, I wanted to make sure anybody can can actually uh, hear me. I can't hear anybody, um, which is which is interesting. I'm so sorry that I yes. can't hear you. you everyone, me. Danny, just to, so we're clear, everyone can hear you. You're just not able to hear their questions. We're taking the questions through the chat line. Okay, very good. All right, any other questions I can answer for you? All right, Danny, let's just give them like another 30 seconds, and then if you want to share your screen, I can put up the uh, survey information and the recording that will get out to everyone after the webinar concludes. Okay, so I'm going to um, share to you, Mathis? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, I just want to say thank you, everybody, for for actually attending. I know you're very busy in your schedules you know, trying to get your claims out. Um, here at SimSol, um, we're dedicated to actually try to assist you in any way we can. And so if you have any questions whatsoever concerning our product, uh, please don't hesitate to call. Uh, let me give you those numbers so that you have them. It's going to be 1-800-447-4676. My direct extension is 520 if you'd like to call me, or our technical support staff is very, very good you can hit that by hitting extension one, extension one, 1-800-447-4676, okay? And uh, this session has been generated from based upon your requests out there in the field on how to handle these odd shaped rooms. Actually, if you square them up and then you take what's left of that square, and uh, you're gonna be pretty much right on the button. But like I said before, we are doing um, some programming on that to handle circular rooms and odd shape rooms and things of that nature. So I hope this uh, has been very beneficial for you.